So today we're going to talk about section 15.2, which discusses more of acid-base equilibria using buffered solutions. So a buffered solution is one that can resist a change in its pH. Most common example is your blood. Blood can always resist a change in pH because that's what keeps the cells alive. Cells aren't very susceptible to changes in pH. So there are two ways you can have a buffered solution. You can contain a weak acid and its salt, so for example hydrofluoric acid and sodium fluoride, or a weak base and its salt, so ammonia and then ammonium chloride. This is a similar procedure to calculate buffered solutions as calculating weak acids and bases from Chapter 14, so it shouldn't be much different. Um, we're just going to go through a few examples. So we have a buffered solution containing 0.5 molar acetic acid and 0.5 molar sodium acetate, and we want to calculate the pH of the solution. Well, the first thing that we need to do is identify the major species. So since acetic acid is a weak acid, it's for the most part going to stay together, but we know that the salt is going to totally dissociate, so that gives us Na+, plus, C2H3O2-, minus, and then we've also got water. So as you can see, we've got our common ion of C2H3O2-, minus. and based on the Ka value, we know that acetic acid is going to be the more dominant H plus contributor, and so we can write our equilibrium equation breaking up the H plus and the C2H3O2 minus. We, we can also write a Ka value for this, which we know it's 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And if we want to write the expression, it's H plus C2H3O2 minus and then H C2H3O2 on the bottom. So now if we set up an ICE table, now if you remember from section 1, this is where it's a little bit different. Initially we're starting with 0.5 molar of the acetic acid, no H+, but because the salt is going to completely dissociate and there's 0.5 mol molar of it, we're going to have 0.5 molar initially of the acetate ion. Change, we have minus X, plus X, plus X, and so that gives us 0.5 minus X, X, and 0.5 oops, plus X. Okay, if we plug that into our Ka and we make our approximations, we're going to have X on top, uh, 0.5 plus X, 0.5 minus X, and then if we make our approximations as X times 0.5 over 0.5, and that gives us an X value of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth which if we check it with the original of 0.5, the approximation of 5% or less checks out. And so now what we need to do is find the pH. So pH is equal to negative log of H plus concentration, which in this case is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And if you do the math on that, you get that your pH is 4.74. Okay, so very similar to the example we did in 15.1, only difference from chapter 14 is that concentration of the salts. Okay, so let's look at another example. When we calculate the change in pH, so now we're looking at change in pH that occurs when we're adding 0 0.01 moles of solid NaOH to 1 liter of the solution in example 1. And then we're going to compare that pH change to if we just added the NaOH to water. So we want to break this problem up into two steps. First of all, um, looking at the major species. Okay, we know we're going to have the acetic acid. Because sodium hydroxide is a strong acid, it will completely break apart. And so we're going to have Na plus, OH minus, and then also Na plus from our salt, and then our acetate ion, and water. Okay, we're assuming that the NaOH is a strong acid, which means it's going to completely go to completion. So our first step is to look at our stoichiometry and do that calculation. And so since it's a strong base, we're going to have HC2H3O2 plus our OH minus. Since it's a strong base, it completely dissociates. And that's going to go to our acetate ion and water. Now, before the reaction occurs, we know we have one liter of our buffered solution and we had 0.5 molar 
of our acetic acid and our salt. So that if we wanted to find moles, that's one liter times our 0.5 molar solution, which gives us 0.5 moles initially. Our OH, we know we're starting with 0 0.010 moles of NaOH, so that's our OH. We know that in our buffered solution we had 0.5 molar of the salt, so that may, means if we had one liter of the buffered solution, we have 0.5 moles of the salt, and we're not going to look at water. After this reaction occurs, basically what's happening is all the OH is reacting until it's completely gone. And so that means that for after reaction for our acid, it's 0.5 molar minus 0 0.010 molar of the OH minus, giving us 0.49 moles of acid left over. No OH left because it all reacted. And for our salt, our ion, we've got 0.5 moles plus the 0 0.010. And so that gives us 0 0.51 moles. Okay, so that's the first part we need to do the stoichiometry. Now let's do the second part, which is the equilibrium calculation. So for the equilibrium calculation, which is the second part, now we're looking at the acids. We have the HC2H3O2, and it's going to break up into H plus and C2H3O2 minus. And then we know that from the previous example, our Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's equal to our H plus, our acetate ion, divided by our acid. Okay, so now we can do our ICE table. The only, since we did the stoichiometry first, we're using those after reaction concentrations to do our equilibrium. And so that means that the concentration of our acid is 0.49. We have no H+, plus, and the initial concentration of our acetate ion from our salt is 0.51. And so then we have our minus X plus X plus X. So we have 0.49 minus X, X, and 0.51 plus X. So we can plug that into our Ka, and so we get 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to H+, plus, which is our X, times our acetate ion, which is our 0.51 plus X divided by our acid, which is our 0.49 minus x. Now we can make our approximations. That brings us to x times 0.51 divided by 0.49, giving us an x value of 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. And if we check this with the approximation, it does check out. And so now we can find our pH value. pH is equal to negative log of 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that gives us a value of 4.76. And so to find the change in pH, which is what we wanted to do, we take our um, solution pH, which is 4.76, minus the pH of just the buffered solution, which from the previous example, if you remember, was 4.74, and that gives us a change of 0 0.02. So you can see that the pH didn't change very much, even though we added a strong base. And so now we want to look at the pH, uh, the change in pH of what happens when we add that strong base to a sample of water. Okay, so for the NaOH and water, we know that K sub W is equal to H plus times OH minus. And so if we want to find the H plus concentration to find the pH, then that's equal to K sub W over the OH minus. Well, for water, we know that that's 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. Since we added 0 0.01 moles of the NaOH solution, that becomes the concentration of the OH, so 1 times 10 to the negative 2, giving us 1 times 10 to the negative 12, our H plus concentration. So now if we want to find the pH of that, it's negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 12, which is equal to... 12. And so now to find the change in pH, we go with our solution pH minus the initial, which was just water, which is 7. And so that gives us a change in pH of 5. So as you can see, buffered solutions really resist a change in pH. 
we have a change of 0 0.02 versus a non-buffered solution being water um, and a change of 5. So it's a really big difference. So buffer solutions definitely resist changes in pH. So let's look at some important points. Okay, buffered solutions are solutions of weak acids or bases containing a common ion. And then it's basically the same procedure as, as in Chapter 14, which hopefully you saw from the examples that we did. When you add a strong acid or base, like we did with the NaOH, you need to deal with the stoichiometry first, which is what we did, and then do your equilibrium calculations just like we did in Chapter 14. Okay, so let's look at how does buffering work. Well, a buffered solution um, that contains, usually contains large quantities of the weak acid and, and its conjugate base. And so um, if we add a hydroxide ion, so OH, we know that the weak acid is the best source of protons. And so that means that the OH minus is going to react with the HA, with our weak acid, to give our conjugate base and water. And so what this means is that the OH is not allowed to accumulate. It gets replaced by the conjugate base. And so this is how buffering solutions are working. They're not changing the pH because they're not allowing the OH minus to accumulate. Okay, so if we wanted to find the H plus uh, concentration, we could use our Ka equilibrium expression and rearrange it. And so this means that the pH is determined by that ratio of HA our weak acid divided by the concentration of the conjugate base. And if we add the OH minus, we convert that weak acid to the conjugate base and the ratio would decrease because we have less concentration of HA. And this would change the pH. But if the amounts of the acid and the conjugate base are really big compared to that OH, then the change in the ratio is going to be really tiny, which means that the pH isn't going to be affected as much. And that's how a buffer works. And it's the same idea if we added H+, plus, so protons, instead of a hydroxide ion, it works the same way. So we have the H+, plus and then the conjugate base forming the weak acid. And that ratio is going to change very little also because we're reducing the amount of H+, plus ions that can hang around. So we know that we can use this expression to calculate H plus Ka times the concentration of HA over A minus. Okay, we can write this in a lot of alternate forms. So we can take the negative log of everything. So negative log of H plus is negative log of Ka minus log of HA over A minus. And this gives us that pH is equal to pKa minus the log of that ratio. We can also write it in another form. Okay, so uh, pH equals pKa plus the log of A minus over HA, so we've switched these two. And then that gives us a general form of pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base divided by the concentration of the acid. And this is called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So basically, for any particular buffering system, all solutions that have this same ratio of the conjugate base over the weak acid are all going to have the same pH. And um, we're also assuming that the concentration of the conjugate base, and this also applies for the weak acid, is equal to the initial plus x. Remember we're saying x is really small, so we're basically saying that the equilibrium concentration is equal to the initial concentration. And the reason we can do this is because we're assuming that those concentrations are very large. Remember that's an indicator of a buffer solution. Both your HA and your A minus concentrations are large. Okay, let's look at an example of this. We've got, um, we want to calculate the pH of a solution containing 0.75 mol molar lactic acid and 0.25 molar sodium lactate. So the first thing we want to do is identify the major species. Okay, well we know we've got our lactic acid, our sodium from our salt, our lactate from our salt, and water. Now, this is a buffer solution because we've got a weak acid and it's salt. And so we're going to assume that the initial concentrations are equal to the equilibrium concentrations because they're in very large quantities and this is a buffer solution. So that means that we can use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation, which says that the pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base 
over the concentration of the acid. Okay, so pH then is equal to negative log of the Ka value, which is 1.4 times sin of the negative 4, plus log of concentration of the base is our conjugate base, that's our salt, that's 0.25 molar, divided by the concentration of our acid, which is our lactic acid, which is 0.75 molar. And if you do some math on that, we get that our pH is 3.38. Okay, an alternate way to do this is to say that we know H plus is equal to Ka times eight, the concentration of our acid over the concentration of our conjugate base. Basically, we're just rearranging that equilibrium expression. And so if we plug in some numbers for this, we'll plug four number nine and four times 0.75 because that's our acid over 0.25 because that's our conjugate base we get 4.2 times 10 to the negative 4. That's our H plus. So then we say negative log of our H plus is equal to our pH, which equals 3.38. So you can see that either way you want to go about it, it's giving you the same answer. Key thing here being that we're assuming equilibrium concentration equals initial concentration because they're in large quantities and this is a buffer solution. So buffer solutions can also be formed from a weak base and the conjugate acid. And so the weak base reacts with NaH plus that's added, so to give our conjugate acid. And then that conjugate acid reacts with NaOH minus that's added to give our base and water. And then it's the same exact procedure that we used for the weak acids and their conjugate bases, or the salts. Okay, we will go over a few examples on how to look at weak bases in class. Otherwise, here's a summary of what we've talked about. So buffered solutions contain large concentrations of weak acid and the corresponding weak base. So either the weak acid and its conjugate base or the weak base and its conjugate acid. When H plus is added to the buffered solution, it reacts essentially to completion with the weak base. Okay, and so we've got H plus and A minus going to HA or H plus and B going to BH, so either the weak acid or the weak base. When OH minus is added, it also reacts essentially to completion. And you've got examples of both situations there as well. So the pH in the buffered solution is determined by the ratio of the concentration of the weak acid and weak base. And the, keep in mind that the concentration of the buffering materials that weak acid and conjugate base, or weak base and conjugate acid, need to be really big compared with the amounts of either the H plus or the OH minus that are added. Okay, so here's problems to work on, and we'll discuss uh, more examples in class. Have a good day.